Should be some cool footage, right? Saturday morning. It's gonna be a busy one today. If you're wondering why there's no planes in your beautiful Saturday morning time lapse, it's because they're all inside being worked on. All right, so there's no Vincent today. It's me and then there's uh, two contractors, David and Luis. Both very nice guys, I got my morning coffee. Happy, uh, merry, uh, happy holiday Christmas Eve to everybody. Hopefully you're not all working. If you are, you must be in aviation. So today we got to troubleshoot a de-ice issue. Actually, we've got two planes with de-ice boot issues. Uh, Night Shift took it off for us already, so it's just a matter of slapping the new de-ice boot on there. The brake issue came back on 7.4, so I'll be troubleshooting that as well. Here's what the wing looks like with no, no de-ice boot. <laughs> David, Luis. Yeah, I, I showed, do you remember when you was... Yeah, you showed it? Yeah, I showed it. <laughs> uh, Luis has been in a video before. This is David's debut though. He's hey a... guys, how you doing? So today we're gonna, we're gonna show you how to install the, the, the ice booth. We're just doing some final touches, cleaning it up here. All right, so while they work on that, I'm gonna work on this brake issue. I think what I'll probably do is start by swapping brake master cylinders from left to right. The issue that we're having with the brakes, basically what's happening now is when you press down on the brakes, it'll hold pressure, but if you slowly release the brake and then press down again, it'll have more travel than it should. We've already changed a master cylinder and a shuttle valve. It's a pretty simple system, but what we're gonna do now is try swapping the master cylinders left to right see if the issue follows. I think maybe there's an internal leak in the master cylinder and when you're pressing on it the seals are leaking and allowing fluid back into the reservoir. In order to do that I'm going to take out the pilot seat just so I have a little bit more room to work underneath the uh, bolt. Two nuts and bolts down here and then the seat slides right out. So I just printed off the reference for installing the boots. David and Luis can get started. The surface looks nice and clean. So these Boots are actually held onto the wing by 3M glue. Basically line it up and, and uh, glue the new boot in place. We'll have to reinstall the angle of attack indicator, which goes right here. Reinstall the wing tip. Yeah, I'll look at it. All right, so I just wanted to record the part number. I'm gonna go double check the IPC and make sure this is applicable. Looks like that's a good part number. These guys are going to start putting glue on the wing. Here's the glue we'll be using. It's nasty stuff. Grab a popsicle stick to stir that up. Basically what we were worried about with this being the wrong part number boot is the angle of attack indicator has to uh, carry through the uh, new boot. We had to make sure that we had the right part number de-ice boot because we're going to have to cut a hole in it. Uh oh maintenance control phone maintenance control this is James okay, so anyways we had to make sure that this uh, the new boot that we're installing has an area that um, that we can cut out for the angle of attack indicator to go through so basically this is the new boot and each of these segments gets pressurized I think in the hundred hour video Vince showed but so each of these sections gets pressurized and the angle of attack indicator needs to carry through the boot so this right here is a segment of the new boot that we're going to end up cutting out so that we can pass the angle of attack indicator through it. And so what we had to make sure is that this bladder wasn't continuous through here. Um, that way we'd be able to cut it out without, you know, creating a leak in the boot. All right, that's taken care of. Get back to removing the seat. Nice Christmas job, huh? <laughs> You're gonna say we're gonna get it done. Yeah. See that, guys? We'll get it done.
All right, David just finished applying the first coat of 1300L. Yeah, we're gonna wait for two uh, hours. Hour? We're, gonna, we're gonna wait for one hour, let it dry, and then apply the second coat. Two more hours. Two more hours. Yep. And then we used uh, toluene to reactivate it, make it sticky again, and then we install the boot. I'm getting ready to start troubleshooting the other aircraft with the de-ice boot issue. I'm gonna start by taking it out and running the engine, and run the boots and see what, you know, what part of the uh, boot cycle we get the cast message. Fire. Here we're on the north taxiway. Run the engine at a couple of different power settings and cycle the boots on. So here on the ice protection panel, you can see I'm about to press the boots to a one minute cycle. So there we just got the cast message and it came on when the boots cycled to the inboard upper portion. So we'll let the boots finish their cycle then we'll turn them off and uh, bring up the power a little bit and see if it'll fail again for us. I'm going to go ahead and uh, set the condition lever from ground idle to flight idle and then I'm going to increase power on the engine. Try running the boots again. Now we're, we've got the power up uh, to probably about 50% thrust and we'll go ahead and turn the boots back on to a one minute cycle. Bring the power back here. So the, the boots just made it through a full cycle without the cast message going off. So there could be a number of things. There could be a leak in the boot that we haven't found that's causing lower pressure uh, when it's at that low power settings. Could be one of the uh, pressure switches is faulty or needs to be adjusted. Uh, or it could be an issue with the system pressure regulator. How the de-ice boots work, we're taking bleed air off the engine. Compressed air um, that hasn't had fuel introduced to it yet. So it's clean compressed air. And it's coming, coming through this line here. And it travels through this line and ends up back here coming in right right about here then it leaves that regulator and travels back so I'm gonna do some research in the in the maintenance manual and see what the next step is wait till you see who just showed up what up man oh <laughs> yeah I'm rolling oh, what's good dude good. Happy Hi. Hi. oh my god you, gonna... uh, you eat yet no, I could go. Yeah. You want to go to Shawarma Factory? Yeah, yeah let's go. Did you hit Shawarma up? Factory. Yeah. You've been you've been missing from the videos. Yeah. Every like everybody has missed that smiling face. Guys, we're about to hit up the Shawarma Factory. Bringing my girl there for the first time. She's never she's never had Shawarma, no. like Iron Man. Vince is out of it right now. So the the Shawarma Factory was closed. He went to Eureka, got us a burger which we just ate, and now he's gonna leave. But he didn't even film anything of him driving around with Bianca. <laughs> I'm gonna be back on Monday for that Discovery flight. Oh, you are, dude? Yeah. Later, Vince. These guys are getting ready to install a new boot. Brushing toluene on here, which uh, reactivates the 1300L, the glue, and then we're slowly rolling uh, the de-ice boot in place. You gotta go in small segments or else you'll get air pockets. All 
right, well, Luis and David work on installing that de-ice boot. I'm going to take this aircraft out, run it, and taxi it. This is the one we're working on the brakes. And after swapping master cylinders and bleeding the system, um, the brakes are, are feeling firm. Uh, so I'm thinking what we might have had is a small uh, air bubble trapped inside of the master cylinder. So anyways, I'm going to go run it right now. Got to reinstall the pilot seat, and then I'll run it and see if, uh, see if it's doing any better. The way these seat bolts work, so as the seat slides forward, the seat tracks will get caught up on on this little retainer here, and that's what'll keep the seat from going all the way forward and coming off the tracks. Okay, powering the plane on. We're gonna go do a high-speed taxi down the runway. Hopefully the brakes hold good. If they don't, I can always use reverse thrust, so I can actually turn the propeller into reverse if I were to have a brake failure, and that'll get me stopped safely. Okay, that was fun. Now, now I just want to fly the thing. Oh yeah, brakes seem to work well. That's, that's one down, three to go. So just as I was feeling a little discouraged with the workload that I have today and the progress that I've been making, it's been a really, it's been a busy, hectic. My boss shows up to work on Christmas Eve just to thank me for my hard work this year. I think it's a good time to reflect on how important it is to be working with a positive group of people. It's important to remember, it doesn't matter how much money you make or how cool your job is, you need to work at a place that cares about you and with a group of people that care about you. And those are really what, what, what's gonna make you enjoy your job. To me, that's success, that's happiness in a job, is, is working somewhere that you love to go to work and, and even when it's tough, you enjoy showing up and you enjoy being there. So yeah, that's my, that's my, uh, Christmas Eve two cents about work-life balance. Work doesn't have to feel like a job if you really enjoy where you are and what you do. I wonder if that's going to look cool with the rain getting little raindrops on the camera, or it might just be too dark to even see. But let's knock on some wood, because that's not going to happen. 